Good afternoon, everyone. I warmly welcome you all to the second English debate of the year, which is in the senior division. As always, we shall be conducting the senior debate in two phases, both of which will be in the parliamentary format. After all three speakers from both houses have spoken, the first speaker of each house will return to the lectern to present their rebuttal. They will be given two minutes to do so. There will be no points of information or POIs and cross-questioning is not permitted. Our judges for today are Mr. Singh, Mrs. Crispin, Mr. Costa and Mr. Nanda. So without further ado, we shall begin with the first debate which is between Pal and Condon. The topic is Single Gender Schools Are Detrimental to Society. I now invite Delden Wangmo from Pal House, the Prime Minister of Side Proposition, to express her views. Behind these walls, they miss the blend of perspectives that diverse minds send. In single gender schools they stay, half the world's kept far away. A very good afternoon to the house at large. Today, as the Prime Minister of Site Proposition, I will be highlighting my team's case and proving to you why we as Site Proposition believe that single gender schools are detrimental to society. The Deputy Prime Minister will be speaking about the importance of building relationships and Indian mindset. And the Chief Whip will be speaking about gender identity and summing up our team's case for the House today. The topic of single gender schools, ladies and gentlemen, might seem complex at first. But surely, it's quite simple. Allow me to explain to you how. To begin, I will be defining the key words in today's topic. Single gender schools are educational institutions that exclusively enroll students of one gender. All boys or all girls. It is the practice of educating girls and boys in separate physical settings where the genders do not interact with each other. And detrimental meaning harmful. My first constructive argument focuses on social disparity. Co-ed schools encourage interactions with the opposite sex. These interactions expose students to different perspectives every day. Without this, children, such as those who attend single gender schools, can find themselves stuck in a bubble, surrounded by people with similar and repetitive experiences. Ladies and gentlemen, the school years are an extremely formative part of the psychological development of a young person. The pseudo-experimental environment of a single gender school nurtures unhealthy attitudes towards the opposite sex. Single gender schools perpetuate harmful gender stereotypes and reinforce the notion that boys and girls are fundamentally different. By segregating students by gender, we are telling them that their gender is the most important aspect of their identity. This can lead to a narrow and limiting understanding of what it means to be a man or a woman. Gender segregation is a form of discrimination and it's time we recognize it as such. Keeping girls and boys in separated environments at such an early age during the formative years of their lives is undoubtedly going to affect their social skills later on. Ladies and gentlemen, think for yourself. If you keep cats and dogs separate from each other, they're sure to go crazy the first time they see each other. And before side opposition pounces on my example of choice, I would like to state that at the end of the day, we have all evolved from animals. Single gender schools often lack the diversity and inclusivity that co-ed schools can provide. By mixing students of different genders, we can create a more inclusive and accepting environment that allows students to form connections and learn from one another. Is that opposition trying to say that the very institution that we are sitting in today, which for any of you wondering is co-ed, is a detrimental one? I would like to end by saying that it is time we all see gender as a spectrum instead of two sets of opposing ideals. Thank you. Thank you, Delvin. I now, I now call upon Isha Loda, the leader of the opposition, to express her views on the topic. Mission of the chair, I would like to begin. Quote, a single gender school 
for the case of females may not be the best option for all young women, just those who one day want to make an impact on the world. Unquote. Tom Hanks. Good afternoon, respected judges, worthy opponents and audience. Today I, Isha Lodha, as the leader of the opposition, will be presenting to you exactly why the motion under fire today fails. I would actually like to start by congratulating the Prime Minister of Side Proposition on her wonderful speech and say that if only her speech had more facts instead of just plain manipulation, it would have been even more compelling. Now, the topic today is pretty self-explanatory, which is why I will be diving straight into my first constructive argument, reduced gender stereotyping. Panel in a single gender school, students may feel lesser pressure to conform to traditional gender stereotypes. For example, girls may feel more comfortable pursuing STEM subjects without the fear of being judged, and boys may feel more comfortable expressing their emotions and engaging in activities traditionally associated with girls. This can promote greater gender diversity and equality in academic and career choices. So when side proposition states the converse, I would like to question them and ask, where is our learning in this? Panel, where is our growth? Where is our chance at equality? That's definitely something to think about. Now, for my second constructive argument, which is two more than what side proposition has presented today, let's talk facts, science and statistics. Now, these single gender schools eliminate unhealthy competition between boys and girls, and here's how. See, the reason behind single gender schools is the fact that boys and girls are different neurologically and hence learn differently. According to a study titled How the Brain Learns, New and Exciting Findings, boys develop visual, spatial and temporal skills faster than girls and girls acquire verbal skills faster than boys without having to compete with each other and vice versa. Let me further elucidate my stance through the form of another example. According to a study by Michael and Kathy Stevens, classrooms based on gender promote different skills and make learning more relatable. The study states that new PET scan and MRI technologies reveal structural and functional differences in the, boys, in the brains of boys and girls. So if side proposition still believes that their stance remains unweakened even after the logic that I have just presented, well, then I guess ignorance truly is bliss. Therefore, panel, in conclusion, all I would like to say is that we here as side opposition aren't living in the stone age as side, propos as side proposition seems to be describing or even against the concept of a mixed school. However, we are simply advocating for the promotion of single gender schools, ladies and gentlemen, because as I have just proved to you, they are not detrimental to society. In the words of B. Forbes, vitally important for a young man or woman is first to realize the value that education holds, and then to cultivate earnestly, aggressively, and ceaselessly its habit of self-education. Thank you very much. Thank you, Disha. I now invite Saksham Chaudhary, the Deputy Prime Minister of Side Proposition, to express his views. Wow, studying in an all-boys school makes me feel comfortable. I can talk pretty openly. Fast forward to 10 years later, in the real world, where both men and women live. How do I make basic conversation with this human of the opposite gender? I never learnt it during my formative years while growing up. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I, Saksham Chaudhary, as Deputy Prime Minister of the Proposition, will be presenting to you exactly why the motion today prevails. In India, it is quite common to be studying in a single gender school and we can't blame this on anyone because co-education is not well implemented in our country and one of the major reasons for this is the basic Indian mentality. Here's an interesting fact, India closed only 64.1% of its gender gap in 2024 resulting in an overall rank of 129, marginally lower than 2023's 127 ahead of only Maldives and Pakistan. This downfall is due to single gender schools still promoting the old Indian mentality, alienating boys from girls and vice versa, which not only is harming our social values, but also absolutely ruining and annihilating all attempts of us as a society in embracing gender equality. 
सिंगल जेंडर स्कूल आर डेटमेंटल टू अर सोसाइटी एंड पीपल डोंट अंडरस्टैंड दैट एंड ट्रीट द मीटिंग ऑफ बॉयज एंड गर्ल्स एज अ फॉर बिड इन फ्रूट सिचुएशन विच इज जस्ट हिलेरियस बिकॉज दैट्स नॉट हाउ इट इज इन द रियल वर्ल्ड schools are the starting point of everyone and treating the meeting of boys and girls as something which is wrong is just illogical and it can lead to a lot of difficulties later to excel among the opposite sex certain values must be incorporated in us at an early age itself otherwise it's just going to be giggles and oh he he he's a boy or she's a girl when it's time for a conversation and i'm not only talking about relationships even when it's time for a meaningful conversation people have trouble talking to the opposite sex now about relationships the most important and significant part of a human's life regardless of gender is building relationships single gender schools absolutely destroy the meaning of these relationships with no interaction to and alienation from the concept of the opposite sex students fail to develop any ounce of social skills leading to them becoming incels and femcels very gen z terms but they basically mean people who think they cannot attract the opposite sex life is not segregated by gender and it shouldn't be therefore gender segregated schools do not properly prepare children for life as adults in today's progressive society where equality and diversity are of utmost importance coed schools are more beneficial in preparing their students because they expose students to the opposite sex allow students to experience different genders perspectives and promote gender inclusivity in coed schools students are challenged to perform to the best of their abilities regardless of gender this creates a more competitive and motivating environment thus increasing improved academic performance to end my stance i would just like to make you all aware of the fact that we are studying in a coed school and studying in a coed school and complaining about it thus side opposition is just fighting for a lost cause Ashman Goel to express his views. A 14-year-old boy ends his life after feeling rejected by a female friend in school, and a class 11 girl dies by suicide. Says in note, would have been alive if he hadn't rejected me. and many more recent tragic events including the death of young students due to feeling of rejection and low self esteem highlights a critical issue the question we must ask is is it really necessary for students to experience such profound emotional distress potentially leading to suicide simply because they study in a coed school is it worth having students in coed schools if it means they might face the the such severe emotional pain shouldn't they be studying and focusing on their career instead of getting distracted just because they study in a coed school is it really worth it good afternoon to the house at large i ashwin goel the deputy the deputy leader will further elaborate on the topic now the side proposition might say that coed schools are not to blame and the real issue is the hormonal changes but let's consider how these schools might affect a student's mental health coed schools can sometimes make students feel even more insecure and stressed especially during the adolescence when social dynamics are challenging ladies and gentlemen in our country india traditional beliefs especially in some villages who are too stubborn to adopt to modern ways often make interactions between boys and girls before marriage a taboo girls who are seen talking to boys can face harsh judgment and pressure from society this pressure can even lead to them being pulled out of school single gender schools might help avoid these issues by providing a space where such social pressures are lessened boys and girls often have different learning styles and developmental needs single gender schools allow for fitting teaching methods that cater specifically to these differences for example research shows that boys and girls can benefit from different teaching approaches boys might thrive in more hands on active learning environment while girls might excel with collaborative and discussion based methods single gender schools can adapt their teaching strategies to fit these needs more effectively than coed schools can 
Now the point that comes into light that students who study in single gender schools will have a tough time interacting with each other. But let me tell you ladies and gentlemen that students still have ample of opportunities with uh, to engage with the opposite gender outside outside school setting such as extracurricular activities community events and family gathering. Moreover, the idea that students will be unable to interact properly if they don't share the same classroom is not supported by evidence. In fact, single gender schools often incorporate mixed gender activities including sports, arts and community service projects. These activities allow students to develop essential skills in a structured and supportive manner. In conclusion, I'd like to say that single gender schools provide a focus and supportive setting where students can reach their full potential, unburdened by the distraction and unfairness that can arise in co-ed schools. For the advancement of our educational system and the betterment for our society, single gender schools represent a forward-thinking solution that ensures every student has the opportunity to succeed. Thank you. I now invite Vishmesh Singh, Chief Whip of Side Proposition, to express his views. Good afternoon to the respected chairperson, esteemed judges, and my fellow debaters. I stand before you as the Chief Whip for the proposition to unequivocally state that single gender schools are detrimental to society. These institutions, cloaked in the guise of providing specialized education, are in fact perpetuating our outdated gender stereotypes and hindering the progress of our society. Let us delve into the crux of the matter. Single gender schools, by their very nature, foster an environment of segregation. They create artificial divisions between boys and girls, denying them the invaluable opportunity to learn and grow together. This segregation reinforces archaic notions of gender roles, limiting the aspirations and potential of both genders, thus providing the students a well-built fixed mindset. For instance, studies have shown that girls in co-educational environments are more likely to pursue STEM subjects, challenging the stereotype that these fields are dominated by boys. A study by the American Association of University Women found that girls in single gender schools were less likely to take advanced math and science courses compared to their co-ed counterparts. Moreover, the claim by the side opposition that single gender schools enhance academic outcomes are influenced by a multitude of factors including socio-economic status, teacher quality and parental involvement. A meta-analysis conducted by the American Educational Research Association found no significant difference in academic achievement between students in single gender and co-educational schools. This is quite apparent. But on the contrary, many students of our school have excelled in various examinations and that proves my point. Let us not forget the issue of gender identity, which was mentioned before. In a world grappling with the complexities of gender expression, Single gender schools create an exclusionary uh, atmosphere. They deny transgender and non-binary students the opportunity to learn and grow together. Th that affirms their identity. For example, a transgender girl forced to attend a boys' school faces a daily struggle with her identity, impacting her mental health and academic performance. The Trevor Project reports that transgender and girl uh, gender non-conforming students are at a significantly higher risk of suicide attempts. In conclusion, single gender schools are a relic of a bygone era. They do not prepare students for the challenges and opportunities of the 21st century. By fostering segregation, limiting social interaction, and reinforcing outdated gender stereotypes, these institutions are detrimental to the overall well-being of our society. It is time to dismantle these barriers and create inclusive learning environments that empower all students to reach their full potential. Thank you. Thank you, Vishwesh. I now invite Dhanishta Vig, the Chief Web of Side Opposition, to express her views. Good 
Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Nelson Mandela Detriment means to cause harm. How can we say that a school of all places, a school is hindering in the development of society? How? By providing education, by sharpening the skills of their students or by teaching them discipline. Good afternoon to the chairperson, esteemed judges and my dear audience. Today I, as Chief Whip, am opposing the motion at hand and stating through my three constructive arguments how single gender schools are not detrimental to society. My first constructive argument is that single gender schools lessen the stress of the parents regarding the safety of their children. Unfortunately, the parents of many children in India are still narrow-minded and do not accept the intermingling of genders. But the existence of single gender schools enables these children to attend institutes. Even though this is not an ideal mindset, it is prevalent in our country and these schools are a solution to a very real problem. My second constructive argument rests on the fact that the development of the mind does not depend upon the gender with which one is studying. School is a place of knowledge and knowledge can be gained with or without the presence of the opposite gender. If side proposition can question the working of a single gender school, then they do not understand the definition of a school. A school is a place to gain insight. In no way, ladies and gentlemen, does gender influence the concept of a school. Now, a school also teaches us how to socialize with people and opens our mind to different mindsets. It can be argued that single gender schools have limited scope of varying opinions. But I would like to bring your attention to the fact that even in one particular gender, diversity exists and students are still exposed to differing opinions. My third constructive argument says that if the belief that single gender schools are detrimental to society was agreed to by people, then more than hundreds of these schools would not have students doing exceptionally well in academics, sports and art. I would like to give an example of Bishop Cotton, Sushila Villa and Vellum Boys who won a lot of prizes at Nugotium Adam. Can we really say that the students of these prestigious schools are not up to par with the students of co-ed schools? To conclude my stance, I would like you all to ponder on this question. Co-educational and single gender schools coexist in society. How can one attack the very presence of a single gender school and only cater towards the school choice of a single section of the society while completely turning a blind eye to the other? Hence, the narrative that single gender schools are harmful for society has been proved wrong through my stance. Thank you. Thank you, Vanisha. I now invite Isha Loda, the leader of the opposition, to present her rebuttal. I would like to remind you that no cross-questioning will be permitted. With the permission of the chair. Good afternoon to the August gathering once again. Panel, if misconstruing ideas was an art, then, well, I guess I don't need to complete my sentence because side proposition has so grossly steered this debate away from its talking point, which is education panel, not the social characteristics of boys and girls. Ladies and gentlemen, side proposition spoke repetitively about confidence and how co-educational schools help build confidence, but they need to understand the very crux of the matter, which is that while girls are good in some subjects, boys excel in others. When children study in a single gender school, they interact with each other more freely and discuss topics that they, were, that they would otherwise be hesitant to discuss. Panel, the first speaker, went to great lengths to speak about the importance of co-educational schools and how single gender schools are detrimental to society and claim to have verified facts, but I would like to educate side proposition and have them know that with more cortical areas devoted to verbal functioning, the complexities of reading and writing come, come easier to the female brain. Boys, on the other hand, lateralize their thinking and devote more cortical areas of their brains for spatial mechanical functioning. Boys and girls are different, ladies and gentlemen, and therefore they learn differently. And it is imperative that side proposition learns that at the earliest. 
panel i will once again state that the main idea of this topic today is education so when single gender schools strive to improve that very ideal then what is the issue live and let live is what they say ladies and gentlemen and this exactly where is where side proposition has crashed and burnt in this debate because they have failed to take into perspective the thoughts and viewpoint of others and that is exactly why side opposition carries the motion today thank you proud to oppose thank you isha i now invite delden vangmo present her rebuttal a very good afternoon to the house once again disregarding the quibby comments made by side opposition for a minute let us foolishly assume that single gender schools actually decrease distractions improve academics increase confidence and prevent social anxiety but what about when that student enters the real world where men and women are not kept separated like sheep and goats where workplaces have no fixed gender roles and they have no option other than to actually socialize with the other gender uh, according to side opposition stand said student would absolutely lose their mind because the way single gender schools wire their brains does not align with the way the real world operates said student would be distracted feel insecure and pressured show signs of social anxiety and be unable to communicate once they leave the little protected by bubble and enter the real world they won't know how to behave therefore performing poorly resulting in lower job prospects all while they have to do is talk to the opposite gender Uh, the deputy leader spoke about how co-ed schools can be distracting well the real world is co-ed and students need to develop the ability to focus on its various distractions learning to manage these distractions in a mixed gender environment can be crucial for future success after all your future boss probably won't care if you were distracted by the opposite gender in high school the idea that single gender schools are universally less distracting is a bit of a myth they are a part of any learning environment students in any single gender school might still find ways to be distracted after all who among us hasn't daydreamed about becoming a superhero during a particularly long lecture uh the, the leader of side opposition wanted me to state facts well here are the facts then did you know that co-ed students have a better pass percentage in board exam than schools operating separately for boys and girls as shown in a recent survey by delhi government single gender schools are great if you want to be prepared for a world where everyone fits neatly into one gender category co-ed schools on the other hand help students face the real world where what's your major isn't followed by oh sorry we only accept one gender here Thank you, Paul and Condon House. I request you to join the audience. I will request Shreya to collect the score sheets for the first debate from the judges. Foy House and Allen House, please come on stage and take your places. Thank you.